what I'm trying to talk to you today is the changing perception of origami. I don't really want to talk too much about history. I don't want to talk too much about origins. I, I know you've all had some sort of experience with paper folding before. You, you might have done it as a child. You might have done it in the school ground. You might have seen what is possible now. But what I'd like to show you is what has changed. I was exposed to origami. I was able to see what was possible. I practice origami. I've been folding now for about 15 years. And I've, I can say I've folded pretty much all the types there are, many different types I've explored, I've looked, seen many different diagrams, many different books. And because of that, because of exposure, because of practice, I'm inspired by origami. And I still am. I'm going to tell you all a story. I'm going to tell you the story about your experience today at TEDx Munich. So if you take your paper, I'd just like you to follow along as I fold. OK, so today we've all come to the heart of Munich. And for all sex and purposes, Munich is very white and very square. And running through Munich, I believe we have a river. Just fold straight to the middle. And I'm hoping that people have come to the conference from the east of Munich. and from the west of Munich. I believe we have speakers who have spoken, or at least presented, from all four corners of the world. One corner. Two corners. Three. And one more. Four. Um, traveling to Munich, I believe some people have come by air, some people have come by car, some people have come by train. I'm hoping maybe one person possibly has come by boat. Today we have so many people who have given us so many different talks on technology, entertainment, education design. There's so many ideas being shared today and it's really difficult to squeeze it all into our heads. I believe, I'd like to say, we have the peak of intelligence and technology and education design here today. So, so many ideas have been shared today. And hopefully you're all going to go back home and you're going to share those ideas with other people. It's like the idea that we plant in you today is going to grow, it's going to bloom, it's going to bloom like flowers. Okay? And then the idea is that you go home, you share, you'll pass them on from person to person. People looking now will be watching the videos. They'll be sharing them from person to person. And they pass along just like butterflies. So just to talk a little bit about my experiences in origami. When I first started, I used to get books from the library. It was curiosity, to be honest. I saw this particular book, and um, I thought, hey, why not? Looks nice. Something I can do. Um, and I was folding very simple things like this. I got very bored of it very quickly. I thought, that's it. There's nothing possible. And then I saw this. I saw this model. This model is called the Kawasaki Rose. It's um, a very well-known model in the origami community. It's, to me, it's that key model that I always go back to. I'm always following this rose in different paper, in different, st different styles. And I just can't get enough of it. And this is the model which I saw a year later after I gave it all up. I thought, my goodness. I need to learn how to fold that. So I started exploring more. I started looking at new diagrams, starting with going into new people. And it really gave me the bug. 
And so I moved on to things like this. Then if anyone can recognize the character in the center there, we've got a model here called The Last Waltz by a creator called Neil Elias. This is actually one piece of paper. You've got two figures there, but one piece of paper. I started to go out more. Because of all of this interest that I had in origami, I then started to join um, an online international community which discusses and brings up the purpose of origami and promotes origami in so many ways. So we know what's latest, we know what's happening in the world of origami, and we promote it as such. I was inspired by meeting so many other different people. I, I was inspired by going to conferences. I've now been to um, the Origami USA conference in New York, um, the Pacific Coast conference, which was held in San Francisco last year or the year before. And I'm hoping, fingers crossed, uh, to go to Japan this August. So this is what that sort of thing led me to. These two models are actually two of my own designs that I came up with, following meeting people, um, discussing ideas, and then thinking, why can't I do that? Why can't I design my own stuff? So th this is um, some pictures from uh, one of the conferences. This is the 40th anniversary conference of the British Origami Society. Um, I had started to get more interested and more exposed to different types of origami that I didn't know before. This is modular origami, as I mentioned before, taking many pieces and putting them together. Again, this is by a creator called Miyuki Kawamura, and she has a wonderful style of folding, wonderful style of designing, and she really explores the unit that you fold with explores that unit. So these two models, although how different they look in their style and their curves and their angles, they're actually developed from the same unit. She's just varied length, she's varied size, she's varied angle, and she will explore that same unit again and again and come up with hundreds and hundreds of different types of models, all based on that one single unit. One other such example here, it's a maple seed unit, and again, she's done the same sort of thing. She's just varied and varied. This is um, a whole jazz band. This is developed by a French creator called Eric Joiselle. Eric Joiselle was a sculptor by trade, and he also did a lot of origami. And what I really find amazing in Eric Joiselle's style is he doesn't just fold the paper. A lot of origami is when you fold the paper, and then you do something, and then it becomes 3D. Eric Joiselle sculpts the paper. He starts off 3D right from the start, and he comes up with wonderful things like this. At that same uh, BOS conference, we had many Japanese folders, old and new. This is um, a classic folder from, I won't say old, but he's sort of more well-known, uh, Hojo Takahashi. And then we have now new Japanese folders who are now popping up. This is a slightly newer creator who we haven't really seen much of yet, uh, Kamiya Ryo. And I really love this style. It's very anime-esque. Uh, there's another really good Japanese creator who's uh, quite well-known, Kamiya Satoshi. Um, he's created something like this, an ancient dragon. And uh, he's created many, many different models. And uh, they all embody this sense of um, life and fire. So all of these amazing creators are not just limited to the United Kingdom, the United States, and Japan. This is a model called Aquarius. And this was developed by a creator from Uruguay, <coughs> Roman Diaz. And he has so many wonderful models, and this is just one of them. But we have creators and designers and groups all around the world. India, France, Italy, Germany, Brazil, you name it, there's a group, and there's a wonderful folder there. So with all of these different styles that I had been exploring and seeing, new styles started to come up that I'd never heard of before. This is a more recent style called origami tessellations, where you take a whole sheet of paper and you're, you're focusing on one unit. In this case, it's this flower pattern. And then essentially you're repeating it across the page. So all you've done is taken that one single module, that one single molecule, and then repeated it and used it to effect. And 
what's so wonderful about origami tessellations as well is that it uh, has such a great look when you have it backlit like this. This is uh, one I, I think I folded this last week actually. Is it's a model called um, the Sawtooth Triangle by um, a folder from Barcelona. This is um, quite interesting. This is a model called, um, well, it's based on a model called Hydrangea. And in fact, I have an example here. So this is a model called Hydrangea. It's by um, a somewhat well-known folder called uh, Fujimoto Shuzo. And it's very simply um, a form of tessellation, where you're taking the same pattern and repeating it. So I can theoretically repeat this pattern inwards as much as I want to. The creator of that variation which I showed, um, Joel Cooper, took that same idea and he's placed the molecules in different places. So because of this whole idea of tessellations where you're just using these units, you're using these molecules and you can place them as you will as long as you understand the structure and how they fit together, there's so much you can do. And what happens if you then unfold that again? What happens with that paper that was trapped? What happens if you pull it out and reshape it? You get something absolutely wonderful like this. This is done again by the same folder, Joel Cooper from America, where he takes tessellation, he unfolds them, so you get, you get a mask, you get a face. And my trip to USA in New York City in 2008, I saw something like this. And trips and conventions like that, you get to meet so many wonderful people. Um, again, another well-known character, anyone can recognize that's Wall E, done by uh, this someone called Brian Chan. And uh, he's again one of these really wonderful creators who can do wonderful representations like this, but then you find that folders like him will then push the barrier even more than we ever thought was possible and do something like this. We've got a ship, we've got a squid, a kraken, can you believe all of this is one piece of paper? One single piece of paper to create all of that. This is what makes me think origami is so amazing. <coughs> At that same conference, we had another person from MIT um, demonstrate a software that was called Origamizer. Basically, you can take any three-dimensional net and then map it to create a crease pattern, which can re replicate that structure. So you can then recreate something that you've mapped three-dimensionally on the computer and turn it into paper. For those of you who are staying around in Munich for a while, would like to travel to nearby Freising, there is, a co um, there is an exhibition taking place called Confluence. Um, two very special folders are being exhibited, David Brill and Asia Brill. Um, David Brill especially, um, David has the innate ability to bring out the natural characteristic, the natural quality of the model, of the animal, of the, of the figure, of the creator. The cat really looks like a cat. The lion looks like a lion. It's just got that natural beauty to it that makes you think, wow. My friend Robert Lang has already given president to origami. He has one of the many, many, many TED, TED Talks out there. He talks about the use of origami. Um, Robert Lang is actually um, a physicist, used to work for NASA, and he's talking about origami design processes. And he showed how it was possible to take origami, take the structural abilities that we've developed, the structural ideas, the techniques, and apply it to science and technology. Um, such examples from that video, he invented the most efficient way to uh, pack an airbag, and he also um, demonstrated how one such group found a way to create a medical stent made out of uh, metal that would be collapsed and then be placed in the body and then it can be opened up using origami structural ideas. So, Origami, I tend to find, hits on every single possible point, um, be it design, be it science and technology, be it architecture, be it education. I teach children in, uh, in a small way. I teach 
uh, adults in a small way when, when they want to learn origami. And many people find it's therapeutic. Many people find that it eases their mind. Many people find it's very, very frustrating as well. So my journey is now something like this. What I know, I want to share. And I want people to feel the way that I feel about origami. This is uh, an example of uh, one of the many um, workshops that we do around the United Kingdom. This is at the British Science Museum. And it's simple, I know. They're learning how to fold the very simple origami models. But then they learn to fold this and they think, yes, it's something I can do. And then they come and see our table. They see these wonderful models that we folded and think, wow, if I can do this, maybe I can do that. And then slowly they start to change their idea of what they thought origami was. So we've come full circle now. I hope that I've given you some exposure to origami. I hope that you've had a very small chance of practicing some origami. And I truly hope that I've inspired you today. And my key today is, and this is the main brux of my talk, is I'm hoping that I've changed your mindset of what you think origami is. It's not simply just the little butterflies, the little flowers. Origami is amazing, and it's something that can make you say, wow. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.